Hey everybody, welcome to the Man League. I'm John as always, and this is a special episode. Cracker Packs are usually on Tuesday, hence the name Cracker Pack Tuesday. But we are going to do a Cracker Pack today on Saturday of Conspiracy Take the Crown. Now, Cracker Pack Tuesday number 71 next Tuesday will be Conspiracy Take the Crown as well. But I wanted to do another Cracker Pack right now since everybody's probably out playing Conspiracy today if they didn't already play it uh, last night. I have not played it yet. I am actually uh, a couple of hours away from going to my local game store and playing Conspiracy Take the Crown for the very first time. In addition, I haven't really looked at the spoilers for Conspiracy Take the Crown. I kind of go into conspiracies somewhat ignorant, or at least ignorant relative to what I do when I go to a pre-release where I've already done seven hours of set reviews and whatnot. So I don't necessarily know how this draft works, and I don't necessarily know all the cards in the set, but we're going to open this pack and see what we would take pack one, pick one, just based off of pure card evaluation skills. So let's open this and see what we get. Hopefully it's a foil Kaya. Up first, we have... Shambling Goblin. I remember Shambling Goblin. He's from Cons of Tarkir, I think? Maybe Fate Reforged? One black mana for a 1-1 one, one zombie goblin when it dies. Target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Not that great. It kind of depends on how many X ones there are in the format. Can't imagine there's a huge amount. Not in a, not in a multiplayer format. Usually those are built for board stalls. Uh, yeah, Shambling Goblin just isn't that great. He was good when Exploit was around and there was Sacrifice Outlets, but even then he wasn't a amazing. He was still something you probably shouldn't play, so we're never first picking him. Up next is Fleeting Distraction. Fleeting Distraction is a single blue mana. For an instant, target creature gets minus one, minus zero oh until end of turn. Draw a card. Uh, this is not Jace's Scrutiny. <laughs> Jace's Scrutiny uh, being minus four, minus zero oh, generally would blank a creature. Minus one, minus zero oh isn't going to blank a creature. It might allow you to uh, kind of bounce a creature into it without it trading. But uh, it's not great. It does draw a card, so it is still playable, probably. But it's never a first pick. Up next is a card that's either new or a reprint that I've never seen. Um, it must be new. It says Goad. Goblin Racketeer. Three and a red for a Goblin Rogue. It's a 4-2. Whenever Goblin Racketeer attacks, you may Goad target creature defending player controls. Goad, meaning until your next turn, that creature attacks uh, each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. So basically, you say, that creature must attack next turn, and it can't attack me. It's got to attack somebody else. So it's a 4-2 four, for 4, which is not great. I hate that stat. I hate 4-2s four, for 4. They die to so many, like, 2-powered burn spells and 2-powered creatures. Uh, just not a big fan. The fact that you are going to be able to get uh, your opponent that you attack to attack somebody else next turn can be a really big kind of political gain in the, uh, the format. But it still isn't enough for me to play a 4-2 for 4, uh, maybe as a 23rd card, but certainly not a first pick. Up next is Blood Tool Harpy, good old Theros card. Two and a black for a creature Harpy, it's a 2-1 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, everybody loses the life. Totally fine, 2-1 flyers for 3, totally fine, I am willing to pay 1 life for that, especially because all of my opponents pay 1 life for it as well. Probably not first pick, Bolo, probably not something I would ever first pick. Next up is Orchard Elemental. Orchard Elemental is 5 and a green for a creature elemental. It's 2-2. Two, two. It has Council's Dilemma. When Orchard Elemental enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player votes for Sprout or Harvest. Put two plus one plus one counters on Orchard Elemental for each Sprout vote. You gain three life for each Harvest vote. So this is interesting. And these are the Council's Dilemmas cards, the cards where you vote, but it's not like Council's Will. So you are probably going to vote for Sprout. So this is a 4-4 four, four for 6. Your opponents are probably not going to vote for Sprout. They're going to vote for Harvest. So for 6 mana, you get a 4-4, four, four, and if everybody's still in the game, you probably gain 9 life. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. Uh, somebody could vote for Sprout, I suppose, and make this a 6-6 six, six for 6, which, you know, this passes the vanilla test at that point, but it doesn't have Trample or anything. This doesn't seem good enough to me. It, it seems fine and maybe like a 23rd card. Maybe a card if you're in like heavy green ramp and you cast this on turn 5 or, or turn 4, it would actually be pretty good. Um, but otherwise, I'm just not interested in Orchard Elemental. Certainly not as a first pick. Hey, hey, Twin Bolt's back. Twin Bolt, one in red for an instant. Twin Bolt deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two target creatures and or players. Twin Bolt is totally fine. Um, targeted removal... 
isn't necessarily the best in a, uh, a multiplayer format. Uh, it kind of puts heat on you, and it also kills one creature out of, you know, the 12 that might be on the board across four players. Uh, but it's still just a good card, and it's still a card that I would totally consider first picking. Being able to ping off creatures, being able to ping off an opponent who's at one or two life, totally fine. I would always consider Twin Bolt as a first pickable card. Up next is Un- Unnerve. Unnerve is three and a black for a sorcery. Each opponent discards two cards. So it's uh, not him to Turak because it's not random. It's Mind Rot for everybody. So obviously it's a bad Mind Rot if you have one person left. It's uh, an amazing Mind Rot, which still isn't great uh, if you have all of your opponents left for four mana. It could be okay. Maybe if you were in like a Grixis Control-ish deck. Um, but it's not something I would ever first pick. So Unnerve, out you go. Up next we have Divination. Divination is two and a blue for a sorcery. Draw two cards. Everybody knows Divination. Everybody loves Divination. Uh, yeah, it's a solid card, especially in a longer format, like a multiplayer format. I don't think I'd ever first pick it, but I'd probably include it in basically every blue deck I ever play. Uh, drawing two cards for three mana, even at sorcery speed, is really, really good. Up next, we have Ravenous Lucrocata. Ravenous Lucrocata is three and a green for a creature beast. It's two four. It's got Vigilance. And for six and a green, you can Monstrosity 3 it, so you can turn it into a 5-7. Uh, 5-7 seven. Seven Vigilance, pretty darn good. 2-4 uh, Vigilance is fine. You know, for three, for four mana, it's totally fine. I, I would play this, and I did play this in Theros. I was never excited by it, but it was always totally fine. Not a first pick, though. Into the Uncommons, we've got ourselves Burn Away. We've got some more burn spells here. And this actually looks kind of like a misprint... So I had some misprints at FNM the other night where they were basically missing the shadow layer on the art. The art was really light. I'll have to actually grab my Prey Upon and show you guys at some point. I drafted a Prey Upon and another Worldly Outburst that had this misprint. I can't tell if this has it or if that's just the way the art is. I think that's just the way the art is. Anyways, Burn Away, 4 and a red for an instant. Burn Away deals 6 damage to target creature. Uh, when that creature dies this turn, exile all cards from its controller's graveyard. 5 mana to deal 6 damage at instant speed. I am totally in. Totally, totally in. Solid first pickable card. I would love to take uh, Burn Away. Our next uncommon is Beast Within. Beast Within is two and a green for an instant. Destroy target permanent. Its controller puts a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Yeah, th- they get a 3-3, three, three, but if you kill their 6-6, six, six, that's a pretty good deal. If you blow up the single land that they have of their primary color because they're land screwed, that's really good to give them a 3-3 three, three for that. Beast Within is a fantastic removal spell. I would definitely consider first picking it as well. Next up we have, I believe this is one of the, yeah, it's a Draft Matters card. Smuggler Captain, three and a black for a creature, human pirate. It's a 2-2, two, two, and you draft it face up. As you draft a card, you may reveal it. Note its name, then turn Smuggler Captain face down. So you can do this once. At that point, Smuggler Captain's face down and no longer has an effect. When Smuggler Captain enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a card with a name you noted for cards named Smuggler Captain. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So basically, we could draft uh, Smuggler Captain, and he hangs out. And then a little bit later, maybe in the next pack, we draft a Burn Away, and we say, hey guys, I'm going to name Burn Away. And we turn Smuggler Captain face down, I think. It's not creature, right? It's any card? Yeah, any card. Then... Later, when we're playing the game and we play Smuggler Captain, we say, oh, he, he brought a Burn Away with him. And we search our deck, we find Burn Away, and we put it into our hand. Seems pretty good. It's obviously much better the earlier you pick it. The earlier you pick it, the better chance you have of naming something really good to go and get. I would probably consider first picking it just to have that option. It's a little bit of a weak body, a 2-2 for 4, but the fact that if you first pick this, you get your best card across three packs... Seems really good. I would strongly consider first picking it until I learn differently. It could be that it's actually terrible, but, you know, in two hours when I go to Draft Conspiracy, I would consider first picking it. Our rare is Harvester of Souls. Harvester of Souls, four black black. For a creature demon, it's a 5-5. It has Death Touch. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may draw a card. It's pretty good. The six mana hurts. The six mana definitely hurts, especially the double black. But being a 5-5 death touch is going to do a lot of damage. And creatures are going to die. Creatures are going to die while you sit there. Your opponents are going to kill your other opponent's creatures. And you're just going to draw so many cards. It's going to make you a target. 
but it's going to get you a ton of value. So I would strongly consider first picking Harvester of Souls as well. We have a foil, a foil Opaline Unicorn. Opaline Unicorn is three generic mana for a 1-2 artifact creature unicorn. Tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Totally good. Really helps you splash. It would really help you go into a, uh, a three-color deck. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I would first pick it ever, but it is certainly still a good card. I would always include it in uh, any deck that I was splashing or three colors for, and even in a two-color deck, I would consider it. We do finally have a conspiracy. We have Adriana's Valor. Adriana's Valor is a conspiracy. It's a hidden agenda. So start the game with it face down and naming a card, and then you can turn it face up whenever you want. Whenever a creature you control with the chosen name attacks, you may pay white. If you do, that creature gains indestructible until end of turn. So we could draft, uh, I don't know, Harvester of Souls, I guess, and then name it, and then suddenly turn up Adriana's Valor and say, ha ha, all of my Harvester of Souls, of which I will probably have one, whenever they attack, I can pay white, and they're indestructible. Honestly, does not seem very good to me. Just doesn't seem good to me. If it was a really big, beefy creature, maybe, but... Yeah, a lot of hidden agenda cards you want to use on cards that you'll get multiple, multiple copies of, and those are going to be relatively weak, and giving them indestructible means they're probably just going to slam into walls and bounce back to uh, your side of the battlefield. So I don't think Adriana's Valor is all that good, so I'm not super in on that. So we've got a lot of first picks here, and it could just be because I haven't drafted the format yet, but Twin Bolt I think is too weak, so we're just going to take that right out, and I think we're really kind of looking at Burn Away, Beast Within, Harvester of Souls, and Smuggler Captain. Now, full disclosure, going into a draft in a couple of hours, I would snap pick Smuggler Captain just to have some fun with it. Um, if I was competitive, if I really wanted to win, I have a feeling that Burnaway is probably the right choice. It's not as unconditional as Beast Within, but six damage still probably should kill an awful lot of things. So I do think I am going to go with Burn away as my competitive pick, Smuggler Captain as my fun pick. But definitely let me know what you would have taken. Would you have taken the Harvester of Souls? Do you not care about the fact that it's six mana? Is Beast Within better? Is Smuggler Captain actually really competitive and good? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know how Conspiracy 2 is going for you as well. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash the Mana Leak and Twitch.tv slash the Mana Leak. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got that comment section down below. Please make use of it. Click that thumbs up icon if you like it. Uh, click subscribe if you want to see more. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all next time.